Hello. In this video, I'd like to describe a rendering technique that I've been working on called volume tiled forward shading. Volume tiled forward shading is based on clustered forward shading that's described by Ola Olson in his 2012 paper called Clustered Forward and Deferred Rendering. Clustered rendering is a technique that's based on tiled forward shading, and tiled forward shading is again based on forward rendering. And forward rendering is the standard de facto rendering technique that was generally used on fixed function uh, graphics hardware. In this uh, application, you can see here that I'm demonstrating uh, the forward rendering technique. Uh, so this is the basic uh, rendering te uh, technique that's uh, used. There are about 64 light sources, point light sources in this scene at this moment, and forward rendering is able to uh, do this on my current hardware at about 95 frames per second, which is pretty okay. However, if we increase the light sources, let's just double them, double the point light sources, and we'll normalize the ranges. Uh, we can see that uh, forward rendering quickly de quickly um, degrades in its performance, already uh, basically having the performance from uh, the previous setting. So if we go up again, we double the light sources again, uh, and we generate the lights. Let's uh, reduce their ranges so not too many pixels um, have too many light sources on them. But we see we've already dropped below uh, the 30 frames per second, which is the threshold for considering real-time frame rates. To alleviate this problem with forward the the with the poor performance increase of forward shading, the tall forward shading technique uh, was uh, implemented, described by Ola Olson in their paper. Tiled forward shading basically just splits the screen into um, a set of uniform spaced screen tiles, and each screen tile represents a view frustum which can be created within the scene. The view frustum can further be uh, minimized by using the minimax depth planes within the tile itself. So uh, the, the depth buffer generates minimax or defines the minimax uh, sample space within that tile. So we can reduce the number of lights that uh, are contained within a particular tile. So let's go to 1000 light sources and see how the technique uh, improves or scales. Let's uh, keep the lights kind of uh, small relatively. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't matter. I mean, if you have too many light sources on a single sample, uh, your performance will always be degraded, regardless of the optimization technique that you're using. Um, but in any case, we can see that the uh, the rendering technique of um, the tiled forward shading, or 4 plus in this in this case, I call it 4 plus, which is just another name that uh, uh, one of the AMD graphics engineers gave to tiled forward rendering in another paper. Uh, but I also picked up that name of 4 plus, but it's basically tiled forward shading. Uh, we can see that the performance is uh, still pretty good, but once we start getting uh, too many light sources, um, then uh, let's just uh, double this these as well. Then what happens is that um, at tile boundaries, where there's um, geometry splitting um, a tile, oh, where are we? Where are we? Then uh, what happens is that um, a lot of lights might be considered uh, to be inside of a tile due to the fact that the uh, minimax bounds within the tile is very large because of the geometric uh, boundaries. Um, so then uh, the forward plus rendering starts to uh, degrade, especially during the opaque rendering pass, which uh, currently is taking uh, 10 milliseconds of the entire render uh, uh, render time. So what Ola Olson did uh, was he uh, described clustered rendering, which um, is much better at um, uh, at splitting the light sources in the scene based on uh, three-dimensional clusters. And uh, he performed cluster clustering based on the position of the sample and of the normal within the sample uh, to try to minimize the number of lights that needed to be uh, placed into a particular tile. And uh, this really improves uh, compared to uh, tile forward shedding, the light culling and uh, the number of lights that need to be considered during rendering. Um, but uh, the most expensive part of this technique uh, with many lights is the uh, the light assignment to the clustering. So let's let's up this again. Let's double the number of lights. 4,000, 4,000, so that's 8,000 in total. 
and we'll also uh, normalize the light uh, sizes so they don't get too many light sources but as you can see the light assignment uh, has gone up a little bit uh, let's be let's go a bit crazy and go up to uh, five uh, fifty thousand and fifty thousand for a total of ten one hundred thousand uh, lights and uh, we're going to normalize both the bounds and the ranges of the lights so as you can see, it quickly degrades. So if you have a lot of point lights, or a lot of lights, sorry, a lot of lights in your scene, um, the cluster shading technique gets uh, kind of slow because the uh, the assignment. It's doing a brute force assignment. Um, in in the paper described by Ola Olsen, they, they uh, build a BVH over the light sources in the scene. Um, uh, so the uh, optimized version of the uh, light... Um, clustering light clustering with the BVH optimization really improves the uh, sign lights to clusters as you can see without the BVH optimization it's close to 32 milliseconds and with the BVH optimization it's only it's just hovering just uh, under two milliseconds so now we should be able to go over to one million light sources one two three four five six and one million spotlights one two three four five six and uh, let's uh, normalize the ranges of the lights I'm gonna move I'm gonna actually make them one and I'll normalize the bounds of which they're created so our light sources don't get too small but still kind of reasonable so now we have a scene with uh, over two million light sources and you can see that the light assignment to clusters uh, phase is still just 1.5 milliseconds the max the uh, most of the time that's taken to render the scene is now being consumed by the sorting phase this is quite a difficult problem to sort two million light sources in real time and uh, I've been experimenting with different uh, techniques uh, this particular implementation uses a, a hybrid approach uh, between uh, a rate using a radix sort and then combined with a merge sort to optimize uh, uh, GPU usage but I haven't really explored with uh, maximizing the efficiency of the sorting algorithm I I have a theory that or a hypothesis that um, a pure merge sort sorting algorithm might perform faster. I've seen some results from uh, tests with CUDA rendering or CUDA sorting uh, algorithms that uh, look quite promising and using only a merge sort to sort the entire data set. Um, but anyways, this is the technique. Uh, it is quite uh, reasonable to, uh, to have many millions of light sources defined in your scene, as long as they're not on the, exactly the same spot, uh, to... Um, to create scenes with uh, a massive number of light sources and still be able to achieve real-time frame rates. Okay, thanks for watching.